All right, so here I've got an image element with a source set to this URI. If you want to code along with me, note the URI. That's http colon slash slash laurenpixel.com slash 1920 slash 1080. So this is the dimension of the image slash sports, which is the category slash seven, which is the identifier for the image. So you will always get the same image. Now I want to take you behind the scene. I want you to better understand what happens when you set the source to a URI. So I'm going to assign this image a name, X name, set it to image. And now I'm going to go into code behind image.source. Look at the type of this property. It's an image source. It's not a string. In Xamarin Forms, we have different image sources. And this image source class is the base for all of them. And by the way, this is an abstract class. So we cannot create an image source like this because this is an abstract class. Instead, we need to use one of its derivatives. Now, when working with URIs, we have two options. We can either use one of the factory methods on the image source class. So image source dot from, we've got a few static methods here from URI, from file, from stream, and from resource. Now, in this case, we can use from URI here, pass a URI object, HTTP, whatever. Now note that this method returns an image source, which is that abstract base class for all image sources. So we need to explicitly cast this to URI image source. Cast to URI image source. And now we can store the result in an object. Now I'm not personally a fan of using this from URI because it's a little bit noisy. So let me show you a cleaner way to create a URI image source. I'm going to comment this out. I would rather to create a new URI image source directly. Now here we can set the URI and store the result in an image source object. You can see this syntax is a little bit shorter and cleaner. Now this URI image source object has a couple of properties that you might be interested in. One of them is caching enabled. It's a Boolean and by default is true, which means when you're using XAML to add an image to your application and you set the source to a URI, XAML parser will internally create a URI image source. And because caching is enabled by default, that image is cached for 24 hours. Which means if you terminate your application and launch it again, that image is loaded from the cache. Now, sometimes this is desirable, but other times you may want to disable caching. For example, you may want to download a user's profile image that can change. In those cases, you cannot use XAML. Instead, you need to go to code behind, directly create a URI image source object, and set caching enabled to false. There is also a similar property here, image source dot cache validity, which is a time span object. And that's the duration for which our cache is valid. So the default is 24 hours. We can change this to, let's say time span dot from hours, one hour. Now that we have an image source, we can go back to our image and set its source to this image source object. And by the way, there is an implicit conversion from a string to URI image source. So if I set source to URI here, this string will be implicitly converted to a URI image source. And that's the reason you can set the source of image element to a string in XAML. So it will be implicitly converted to URI image source. Now for the rest of this section, I'm going to use this image source in the code behind. So I'm going to go back into XAML, grab this URI, cut, and remove this attribute. Back in the code behind, and put the URI here. So I have disabled caching. I'm not going to worry about cache validity for the rest of this section, so I'm going to delete this line. And finally, set the source of the image. 
and let's remove this comment. Next, I'm going to talk about aspects of images. 